Rubico Global Total Return Bond Fund is an actively managed, research-driven global bond fund. It's a benchmark relative fund, and its benchmark is the Bloomberg Barclays Global Aggregate Index. That gives it an opportunity set of $64 trillion worth of government bonds, supranationals, corporates, and emerging markets. And the fund can also invest up to 30% out of index in high yield. There are five key drivers of returns in our process. The first and by far the most important is fixed income asset allocation. This is the shifting between government bonds, bank capital, high yield, investment grade, emerging markets, and so on. The second driver is global and European rates. We don't tend to take big directional duration trades in general, but we do like looking at yield curve strategies and cross market strategies, and those are driven by our macro research strategists in the team. The third area is foreign exchange, and we like taking small but selected, also research driven FX positions across both developed markets and emerging markets. The fourth area is credit selection, and that's driven by the Rubico Investment Credit, uh, credit Team, uh, by the High Yield Team, both of whom are powered by over 20 experienced credit analysts across the globe. The final area uh, is to have some structural yield or spread when we think um, that we're paid for that risk so that we can boost uh, those portfolio yields. But underlying all of these five drivers, there is that most important one, the fixed income asset allocation, and it's the flexibility uh, and geographic uh, breadth of opportunity set that we have that's very important. We came into the year overweight government bonds, particularly short dated US Treasury bonds because the Fed had already begun their cutting cycle in 2019 and we believe the economy was already late cycle um, by that point. After the Fed then cut rates aggressively in March, we then shifted that exposure over into Asia, particularly Chinese and Korean government bonds, uh, rated single A and double A respectively. And there the central banks had been slower to re respond, leaving higher yields available. As for sector allocation, while we were overweight governments at the start of the year, we were underweight uh, corporates uh, with very modest exposures in both investment grade and high yield. With credit markets cheapening up rapidly in March, we then shifted that exposure from governments to credit uh, to take advantage of that opportunity. And so as a result, we were able to um, deliver returns both in Q1 during a risk off market and in Q2 during much more risk on periods. The fixed income opportunity set has expanded dramatically in 2020 with record issuance of investment grade corporate bonds and even heavy issuance from double B's and single B's, which is unusual in a recession. With very large fiscal deficits, governments have been adding to the fixed income universe as well. We've got small issuers historically, such as the European Union, which are set to become very large in the future. And underlining all of this is the growth of the green bond market, which is something which is very important to Rubico. The second point to make is that if you looked at the 10-year Treasury yield and its fall this year and uh, the capital gains that have been made, you might assume that all fixed income beta gains are over. And indeed, we do think that some developed market government bonds have become quite expensive. But if you look globally, you'll see that the German Bund yield is actually higher than it was this time a year ago in late 2019. And the long end of the Japanese government bond market sees yields which are higher than they were at the start of the year before the COVID crisis. So we see plenty of opportunities for relative value from here. As for the economic and market outlook, we can see that market volatility has declined, but economic volatility has not. The first is because of the smoothing effect of central bank quantitative easing and fiscal policy from governments. But for the economic side, then we saw that dramatic downdraft in real economies in Q2, followed by uh, a sharp rise in Q3, at least quarter on quarter. And we think that economic uncertainty is likely to remain from here um, because the outlook is very much contingent on the path of the virus uh, and, of course, on any potential vaccines uh, or wider immunity in society. So we think there are going to be plenty of opportunities to come uh, particularly in those parts of markets which are not uh, currently being bought by central banks, such as most of the high yield market, where we do expect spreads to move around. And if we do see continued economic volatility, we should see some pretty good entry points. So really, the outlook is one where we think it's going to be important to be patient um, because opportunities in some parts of the market could be better in due course. 
It's also going to be important to be very flexible, moving from one sector to another. That's both geographic uh, and across fixed income sectors. And finally, we think it's going to be very important to be nimble. We saw earlier this year what was really only a five-week bear market in credit. That's absolutely extraordinary. Those things used to take two years before. And so we think that actually bond funds, uh, which are much smaller and more nimble, are going to be able to take advantage of those opportunities, just as we were able to earlier on this year. Thank you for listening. Thank you.